Hi, I'm Matt Dillahunty, and you're watching Atheist Edge. Uh, tonight, we're uh, fortunate to have an old friend, Jim Hall, uh, speak to us. Uh, you may remember that he's, he's been to several of our meetings. He, uh, he videotaped uh, uh, Randy Word's last uh, uh, talk to us, presentation. And uh, he's going to speak on, uh, I think, a very uh, uh, timely uh, topic. Uh, uh, I've got a little, uh, I had a little experience. I went to a Sierra Club meeting a year or two ago, and uh, after the meeting, I was talking to these ladies, and I said, well, you know, we, uh, the, our humanist group uh, oftentimes, or sometimes has environmental topics, and y'all are, you know, y'all are always invited. And she said, what's a humanist? And I said, well, it's, uh, uh, we're atheists. And as soon as I got that word out, I mean, these two older women, I mean, if they, if they could run fast, they would have run. They would have, they would have bolted away from me. You know, she said, uh, she said, atheist, and just turned and, walked, you know, walked away. You know. Uh, so Jim's going to talk to us about uh, promoting a positive image of atheism. So I think that's something we, we uh, our community really needs to do. Uh, Jim, uh, if you uh, don't know him, he's a uh, on the board of directors and secretary of Metroplex Atheists, uh, and he's authored two books. Uh, 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 Most people believe in God. Uh, can they all be wrong? Good title. And then, and then another, a second, another book he, he wrote under a, a, a pseudonym, Stephanie Chase, uh, pulling back the green curtain. Six hundred and sixty-six things your relig your religious leaders never taught you. So, great titles. And he's also a uh, founder of uh, Atheist Edge, which is a YouTube, a YouTube channel, which I think uh, uh, everyone, you know, uh, will be interested in. He's, and he, he's already up to 6,000 subscribers. So it's really growing. And, and he told me, and this is a surprise, 60% of his subscribers are Americans, but the other 40% are scattered all over the world. So. Yeah, his channel, I think he's really catching on. So, uh, uh, and then Jim uh, brought a couple of friends with him, and he'll introduce them as we, uh, as we uh, go along. So uh, let's give uh, uh, Jim a good hand. This is the first time I'm, we're, we have a couple set presentations that we do. Um, this is the first time, we're, we're testing this one on you guys tonight, so this is the first one. So afterwards, feel free, take the gloves off. Tell us what is good, what to leave in, what to throw out, what to add. Do that for us. We need to hear some feedback. Um, second thing, this is going to be interactive. Don't wait. There's going to be like a 30-minute Q&A if we time it properly at the end. Don't wait for that. You're going to forget. So throw your hand in the air and ask any time. Yes. Can I start with uh, problem number one? You're an asshole. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um, no, I'm using notes. Hopefully, once we, you know, we have some other presentations, we've got it down pat. But right now, bear with me. I'm doing some notes. Um, so, yeah. So, um, Sam already answered one thing. I, this is my third time at this meeting, and I really never thought, is everyone in here a non-believer? Because humanists of Fort Worth. And TJ and I were kind of, we were talking about that, like, can you be a, a believer and be a humanist? You can. Oh, yes. Is that, yes. okay. Yes. Are there any believers yes. here? All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, any, we need yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're going to uh, Rose, right? Yes. Okay. I got, I got to tell you about, we, we got to get them on our show. Okay. The Satanic Temple, yeah. right? Do it. No. 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 Not anymore. Not anymore? Oh, not anymore. Okay. We're, we're similar, but we're, we're just a local progressive you guys, we got to get you on the show. Yes, so, I met you guys. Yeah, got we it. would love to have you all on the show, preferably in person. We yes. don't have a date yet in May, but we will by the time we leave here. So <laughs> don't don't leave. So <laughs> once we we're going to set a, a recording date in May, and we're going to tell you before we leave. Cool. That'd be awesome. We're going to hold you um, hostage. <laughs> yeah. So I saw a bumper sticker. It said, uh, it, it, "What's that humanist symbol? What's this guy?" Yeah. Right? <laughs> I saw that on a bumper sticker and it said, nothing is greater than a thinking human. And I thought, wow, that's awesome. And so it got me thinking, I still don't know really. I looked at, I looked at the definition, I'm like, is that how you guys identify yourself or is it something different? But you, I kind of got a beat on what's going on now. We're all basically 
Well, the, this this humanist group is almost exclusively atheist, but mm -hmm. there are, uh, I mean, they're sort of like uh, religious religious unicorns, but there are uh, religious uh, so, religious humans. Yes. So my understanding of humanism, and, and obviously correct me if I am wrong, but my understanding of humanism is that it's it's a basis of morality of what is best for the human race. That's exactly what he said. Okay. Well, and, okay. And, and that the humans, that, that we can decide what right. we deem as moral. We don't need to refer to a supernatural. We're the ones in charge. It's up to us. Yeah. I don't want to get off on a tangent. One quick thing. He, he's an avid carnivore. I'm a vegetarian. We have this. He takes it one step further with speciesism. And I think animals are pro maybe as important as humans. If that, yeah. I hate to say that, but I, I think we, oh, anyway, I'm off on a tangent. So we have that debate, too. Yeah, well, we thought we could support all of creation, but creationists was already taken. So. <laughs> well, you, don't want, you don't want that moniker, do you? What's to say it was created? Yep. Um, okay, so TJ is going to start off. We're going to do 20 minutes each, and we're, I'm going to try to keep us on the clock. I'm notorious for going on tangents. If, if you want, oh, we do a little show called... Uh, uh, Atheist Edge on YouTube, as Sam was talking about. Uh, TJ, Courtney, and Chris, and we're, we're on the show, and just us four being in the same room is kind of a novelty, because <laughs> there's always someone not there at recording, but yeah, this is kind of cool. Um, we're gonna do 20 minutes each, we'll have 30 minutes Q&A at the end if everything goes right, but remember, raise your hand, just butt in any time, because you're gonna forget at the end. And whoever asked a question, you already asked a question, didn't you? Yeah. You, get, you get goodies. Oh my goodness. All right. <laughs> And last yeah. thing, and that is it, TJ. Oh, All right. did it <laughs> next. <laughs> All right. Sweet. My name is TJ Tuttle. I am an aviation professional working for a large aeronautics corporation uh, here in uh, Fort Worth. Um, I, I'm basically a freelance uh, YouTuber, so I mean, we're not making a whole lot of money off of it right now. So I work. I have to work a day job like everybody else right now. So this is kind of me, just like, like you know, riffing and, and uh, talking about stuff I feel and think and stuff. So I'm not like a professional like pundit or anything like that. So I just like to talk about it. I mean, stuff. that's how you get started. Yeah, that's how everybody starts, right? Um, yeah, like that third bullet point, like <laughs> Jim likes to, to, to play games sometimes. I'm just a little <laughs> bit farther to the other side of the spectrum than the other hosts are politically. And that gives us like a really unique spin uh, on conversations. It allows us to get outside of our echo chamber. It allows us to hear other people's viewpoints and stuff. It's a really positive environment on the show. So uh, other than that, yeah, he thinks I'm the firebrand. I guess you would call me that because I, I, I tend to like roll my eyes a lot. I've and, argued with you before. And yeah, <laughs> so I'm kind of like that guy that's like, oh man, really? No, I don't think that's true. But uh, yeah, um, go ahead and go to the next one. So the, the thing I wanted to talk about is like, because this is like almost like going to be a given. If you're going to be an, an, a non-believer or a non-theist uh, or an atheist, and you're going to be interacting with people out there in the world who m the majority of are believers in some sort of supernatural power, or you know, uh, it, it is a believer of some kind in you know uh, something outside themselves or the universe being God or something like that along those lines. So you're going to run up against these people sometimes. And I think it's good for us as atheists um, if we want to have constructive um, interactions at least, maybe not even discussions, but at least interactions day to day uh, with believers and stuff like that. There are some definitely, definitely some things that we can touch upon that will make us more effective uh, uh, human beings, uh, make, make us more effective at um, getting our point across to people because if it is, if it is a, it, an aim of yours to, that when you talk to people, to change their mind about something they are wrong about, uh, there are definitely things that you can do to kind of ease that process down the road. And the first thing that we have to, to uh, know that, is that conflicts will arise. We are going to disagree with people, sometimes very passionately and vigorously. And in those times, we need to learn and, 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 and kind of hone some techniques to kind of take the edge off those situations, uh, calm things down a bit, get back on track, and just resolve those conflicts and be good ambassadors of atheism. Because that's what this is all about, right? If we're atheists and people are looking at us in the world, they are attaching the label that we're using for ourselves to the rest of our group as a whole. So we need to be aware of that fact. So go ahead and uh, bring us to the next slide. How we view ourselves. 
Well, we, we think we're all superheroes, don't we? I mean, don't no. we? No. A lot. I mean, I am. But I, am. I, I mean, we we tend to well, we we at least tend to hold the things. I am a super villainess. Thank you. There you go. I mean, but we all think we all think that we like. Hey, my beliefs. Those are pretty good, solid beliefs, right? Like the things that I think, I think they're pretty sound. I think we all think. You know, hey, I think I got a good beat on what's going on in the world. You know, I think I think the, the things that I think about matter, and, and they're good things. And so we have to actually, sometimes when we're talking to people, we have to actually look at and and know and be aware of that. Hey, this person might construe our confidence in our positions as arrogance, right? So when we run up in these situations, we have to initially think to ourselves, hey. How can I phrase things that I'm going to say, or how can I conduct myself in a way that uh, doesn't uh, give off an air of superiority to the other party, uh, first of all? Uh, and second of all, you want to kind of uh, ease them into the situation as well uh, by allowing them to, to think that, hey, this person doesn't, doesn't act like they're no, they know everything. They're going to actually take the time to listen to my position, and we're going to have some kind of discourse here. So go ahead and uh, we'll go to the next slide. So how do we view everybody else? Is this what you see when you see somebody you disagree with? No, maybe. I mean, maybe, right? I mean, it could be. I mean, I don't know. I, you know, I, I, that's, I don't know. The face is a little weird. Yeah. That's yeah. I mean, so you know, we gotta we gotta understand that we, we may have a tendency that we don't realize when we're talking to folks that we disagree with that we may view them as a caricature or, or in a, in a non, uh, uh, you know, graceful life. You know, you look at somebody or you, or you hear someone say a, a thing and you're like, oh, I totally disagree with them about that. Immediately you get this, this uh, process going in your brain of, I, I bet they're a Trump supporter, or I bet they're this, or I bet they're... We have to stop ourselves, we have to train our brains to when we, when we run into these situations or talk to these people, we have to don't we have to make sure that we have a uh, have a uh, or go in it with a spirit of not assuming that we know what all their positions are, right? So we go into this saying, you know what? Hey, they may have said this that I disagree with, or by the looks of them, it, it looks like they may disagree with me on such and such point. Uh, but do not assume. Question the person. Be like, hey, what is it you really are on about? You know, what is it you believe on topic X? We'll have a talk. We'll talk about it. I'll. I'll present to you what I think the situation is, you can tell me why you think it is you think the way you think. So I think it's really important for us as atheists, since everybody is watching us, like I said, to to give the appearance of, or at least give the appearance of, like, I mean, I know there's, look, don't get me wrong, I know there's some vile people out there. Uh, there, there, there are bigots out there, there are racists out there, there are sexists out there. Yeah, those things exist. But we have to know, we have to realize that you, you can't just off the bat label someone with something that horrible until you get a nuanced perspective of how they view things, right? And then after you've gotten all the information, then if you want to determine, yeah, that person's pretty racist, or, you know, fine. You'll come to that conclusion through reasoned discourse, though. Um, what about whenever somebody goes and starts arguing, well, starts questioning in bad faith? Yeah, I mean, and that, to me, would co constitute a conflict right there, right. immediately, right? So, what I, like I said, you can't, it, it's tough, right? We're, we are, go ahead. No, I was, was going to say, uh, how, how much conversation is enough conversation? Yeah, where do you draw the line? Right, that's I mean, the thing. I mean, if it's, I, st stereotypes have the, sometimes stereotypes can be true. So and because they're based in part in truth right. most of the time, right? Often. Often, so, often. Not, not all the time, right? Because there's no blanket all, like, you know, hashtag not all, whatever, but... Um. I mean, if someone's using coded language, I'm not going to sit there and probe them and, like, are you really a racist? Are you really a racist? Um, I'm going to say, you know what, you're, you're, you're really dog whistling. I bet uh, you're dude, I, I think we have to get away from terms like that be, just because um, it, you're already pigeonholing someone and... It, and if they if they even had an opportunity within their brain to see some kind of reason, d doing cutting people off and, and making these assumptions and just like stopping the conversation dead in the water by using uh, personal attacks in, in a conversation with someone, immediately shuts their brain off to any kind of like, 
hey, this is a reasoned thing and I'm going to try to reason you into my way of thinking, they're automatically going to say, no, this person's already got me pegged to something I'm not or, or they're making me out to be a character, so I'm going to shut up, shut down. You, you make people shut down it, like it that. It depends on the, the type of conversation. Right. 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 Yeah. Well, let me, let, me, let me answer the rest of this question because okay. the rest of this question was how much conversation is enough conversation? So there's a really easy answer to that, right? As soon as you determine that the conversation is no longer productive or serves no purpose or would actually serve to paint you in a worse light by arguing or uh, you know, engaging in ad hominem attacks against a person or just being illogical, you know, because when we get angry sometimes, don't we get we get illogical, right? We can do we can get illogical just like anybody else can. Like we can you know say, hey man, that made me so angry, and I'm just going to say all these things that have no backup, but I'm just going to spew them at you because I'm so mad, right? We have to avoid doing those things. I know it's really hard sometimes, right? Because some people, it's just like, man, you just don't get it, man. You know, and we're and we and we have to recognize those times too. The point is really easy to determine. It's like when you see. I know I'm not going to get anywhere with this anymore, especially when you're in front of other people, like on, when you're on social media or in your own forum, where other people are watching you debate someone or, or have a conversation with someone. It's really important to step back and say, how are people perceiving me in this conversation? You know, don't don't think if they, if they're engaging in in, in uh, logical fallacies and, and name calling and stuff like that. Don't go there with them. Just don't do it. Because then that makes them look like the worse, worse off person. So you know, you just kind of have to rise. It's it's hard sometimes. I know you're man. Sometimes it just somebody just like flips that switch, or they find that nerve and they just stomp up and down on it. Right? It happens. But we have to keep our calm, and we have to know that hey, just because we perceive someone as something doesn't mean they are that thing. Right? We have to have conversations with people, and that's the, that's the point. Um. <clears throat> so, yep. Yeah. So. Like I said, people who disagree with us, they're watching us, aren't they? People who disagree with us are out there and they're saying, hey, what are those atheists doing out there? What do they think? What are they doing in the world? They're so, they're so high and mighty with their science and their, and their textbooks and their, man, I got the answers. I read one book. That's all I need. I'm trying to keep right? God out of the schools and out of the government. Yeah, those uh, those crazy atheists, man. They're doing all this stuff to break down our country and stuff. Yeah. So I mean, you have to you have to realize those people. They're out there, and when you're interacting with them, there are others of their kind, and they're around you, and they're watching you, because there are a lot more of them than there are of us. <laughs> so here's the way here's the way we change people's perceptions of us. We conduct ourselves calmly and logically and sanely in conversations with people that we disagree with. Second of all, I think this is kind of a little bit strain from the slide a little bit, but my thing is, so if we want people's opinions in general in society to change of atheists, we need to let them know a, a certain thing. That certain thing that we need to let them know is this. We are, our, are their brothers, we are their sisters, we are their cousins, we are their mothers, their fathers, their doctors, their lawyers, their neighbors. We are them. We are them. So if we, it's the same way that, that the gay and lesbian communities had so much success in their movement because they let people know. They were out there telling people, look, we're you. We're in your community. We're a part of your families. You just don't know we're there, but we're here. We have to do the same thing with atheism. Look, we're a part of society. Uh, we're, we're actually the fastest growing uh, re uh, religious uh, um, distinction that there is in the, in the country right now. Uh, it's like 23% nuns now. Now, you, they, those people don't all identify as atheists, but there are a lot of non-religious people in the country. And we've actually outpaced evangelical Christians uh, recently uh, by a couple of percentage points, actually. So the tide is turning, folks. We can get there, we can do it, and we can get people to recognize that secularism and atheism is not as taboo as it should be, and that we can normalize things and let them know that we're part of them. We love them too, just like we would anybody else if they're good people, and they care, if, they, if, if we're in your family and you care about us and you accept us as who we are, we'll care about you and accept you who you are right back. You know, we're not, yeah, exactly. Everybody needs to, to learn that, hey, we're all in this together. We, there are people we may disagree with, and they're out there, but the way we change hearts and minds is just like 
everybody else does is through appeals to your heart, right? We're, we, can give, we can use all the logic and brains and book smarts and arguments and all that that we want. But the fact of the matter is human beings have emotions and we are heavily swayed by those emotions. So the way that we're gonna get there is we're gonna show people that, look, we're, we love you and we're part of you, so let's bring it together and let's be one humanity, right? That's how we get there. Sometimes we get distracted though. <laughs> so you see the guy right here, that's me, you know. Multiple pressing matters, responsibilities, a nap. That's all I want, is a nap. Take a break from all the, the humdrum of the day and all the stuff that's stressing you out and, and all the things that are going on in your life that, uh, you know, like you're, you're distracted by this, you're distracted by that, you have things going on in your life, things are going wrong, things are going right, and it's a little bit of everything, right? Life usually is. But we get bogged down in those things sometimes and we forget how to conduct ourselves while we're, di while we're like distracted by these things. So that's another thing we have to be mindful of when we're out there interacting with people is don't get just so distracted by the other things that are going on around you that you forget how to conduct yourself civilly in a conversation with somebody. That is a, I, to me, that happens all the time. I'm, I'm thinking about what happened at work you know, earlier that day or I, I got a, you know, some bill that's coming due that I hadn't paid yet or I got to do my taxes or, you know, and I get to talking with somebody and all those things are going through my head in the back of my mind. I'm like, and I say something, I'm like, oh, you so-and-so, you know, I get real mad and stuff comes out of your mouth. We have to train our brains, again, to avoid doing those things. Uh, and, and all it is, it, it's, it's all about what the, what the main point of this whole thing is, is being good representatives of the label that we are choosing to apply to ourselves. So we're choosing to use that atheist label. People are out there watching us. We disagree with a lot of people, but you know what? We need to find out what they're on about. We need to properly uh, assess our own views, and we need to not get distracted by the things that tend to bog us down in everyday life because those can be distractions to civil conversation. So go ahead and move to the next one. So the ultimate goal is to change and challenge bad ideas, right? That, I mean, it, that may not be everybody's goal, but to, for, for, for those of us that, that actually care about, if you're talking to someone, hey, they say something that, hey, that's not quite right, or uh, I don't know if I agree with that. The, the goal is to, to, is to challenge that idea that you've come across that you find bad, right? Like, hey, that's a bad idea. I should say something about that. Yeah, we definitely should. Uh, but, the, but the other thing is, though, that goes right along with that is that we have to also, in the process, gain understanding. We don't have all the answers. They obviously don't have all the answers according to us, right? So, and we're talking to these people and are like, man, these guys, man, I don't know how they could think like that. But we also have to understand, hey, they may have a nuanced position that we have, hadn't considered yet. We don't know everything. We can't see all ends. We don't know all aspects of every situation. So uh, we just need to keep that in mind. And, what, and you know, like the slide says, it's just we're, we're out there trying to, to challenge the bad ideas, get those changed, and, uh, you know, just promote a level of understanding between people who believe and, and those of us that call, call ourselves atheists because we are them. Thank you. <laughs>